What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Beginner Plays Master, where obviously I'm the master and I'm going to be explaining my moves. So yeah, my opponent plays Sicilian, I'm just developing my knight and you guys know you should always take the center, so that's what I'm going to do. Also, I have decided to go for the format of five minutes each, because um, I feel like I can be instructive, but also we don't have to wait forever. So basically, all I've done is develop my pieces so far. We all in mainline night of theory right now. So, like me being the expert, I already I've studied this. I know all the moves. But I'm just developing my pieces next. I'm gonna castle, get my king safe. And now it's time for me to start a massive attack here on the king side using my pawns. I'm gonna pawn storm him. Okay, so let's see. He wants to do this, so I'm gonna kick his knight away. I think his knight gonna go to h5 potentially, which is one of the ideas in the knight off is to play. Okay, wait, takes, takes, oh wait, this is main line, what am I saying? I go here, of course, uh, this is main line, so I know all this already. Now, the main line is pawn to a5, and after pawn to f5, pawn to a4 is deadly, well. This guy knows a lot of theory, hey? At 1400 already, he knows so much theory. It's pretty impressive. If you know this much theory, you should definitely have a higher rating than 1400. But anyway, knight d4. This move is very complicated. I will explain it after the game. But basically here I'm threatening his bishop and also I'm threatening knight c6 with an attack on his queen and his bishop at the same time. But uh, this is all theory. This is all studying. Uh, the best move in this position is pawn to b3 in which I respond with king to b1. Yes, that is the main line here. This is main line Sicilian knight off. Nothing too complicated. I will be analyzing this game afterwards, by the way, for uh, to show you guys, because right now this is very complicated. His best move is bishop b3, in which I respond with takes and knight a3. <laughs> well, I've never, like, I've studied this all before, but I've never actually got to this position in a game. That's crazy. Okay, but now I'm completely out of book. I think a good move for black here is knight to e5, in which I will respond with bishop to e2, just neutralizing his knight. Okay, rook a4, he's really going for my pawn, so bishop c4 looks like a good option to take his b pawn. And at the same time, protect my pawn. I'm going to go for this. Does he have d5? No, I just take it with my bishop. I was worried about d5 pawn takes, and then I was not in such a good position. But okay, here yeah, I should actually, considering focusing a little bit, because I have a tough position. I'm going to play pawn to h4, just to put some defense on this guy. Maybe I could play bishop c2. His rook looks like it's out of squares here. So how am I going to capitalize on that fact? Maybe also pawn to h5 and then pawn to g6. Making use of this pin on the f7 pawn is a possibility. So I'm just keeping my options open. And now, now that the theory is done, he really does not know what he is doing, so 
that's a very good sign for me. I'm gonna play bishop c2, attack his rook. Let's see what he does. Now this knight is definitely his best piece, so there are some considerations of trying to trade it off. But for now I think I think we just attack the rook. Bishop d4. I think bishop d4 cannot be a bad move. Maybe bishop f4. I mean, either way. Oh yeah, bishop d4 kind of runs into knight f3. So let's go bishop f4. And let's see what he does. Okay, f6. This is not a good move because he's just blocking all these pieces in. But how do I capitalize on this mistake? I think I will take. He has to take back with the f pawn because if he takes this way, I'm going to win his queen. And now I play queen up one square, threatening pawn to f6. And I have created a battery on his king, threatening checkmates. So I've lined him up properly here. I did not actually consider this move that he has just played. So I guess I go queen f3, maybe I infiltrate from the back. Still threatening f6. g6, it goes h6. Uh, so I go f6, pawn takes g6, and there's no way for him to defend the mate. Very beautiful game by me, by the way. Very, very masterful game. Let's look at the game review. And let's analyze this game. So a 94% accuracy from me. I don't think you guys can see that. But basically, we started here with the Sicilian Nidal. This is all main theory. And the move here is always d4. You want to attack the center. Takes, takes, knight to f6, knight to c3. Now, in this game... I can tell you that this is the first ever line anybody looks at in the night off. It's the first one in the book or the book that I studied to be more specific. But bishop e3, this is called the English attack. And e5 is the main line to which I'm just going to click through the moves because they're all book moves. f3, the idea is to uh, not allow knight to g4. Because I want to play queen to d2, but this will be met with knight g4, and then I'm going to lose my bishop. So f3, it uh, also has extra help on protecting the e4 pawn. So he played bishop e7, queen d2, castle, castle. And you can see these are all book moves. All of them are book moves. Even here, book, book. Knight e2 is a book move. By the way, this is a line I was talking about in the game. There's a possibility of him going knight h5, to which I would respond knight g3, putting pressure on his knight. And when his knight takes, I take back. Let's say he plays a move like rook c8. I'm going to hit him with queen to h2. And this mate is very very difficult to stop if he plays h6 i'm just gonna take it for example and basically there's no stopping checkmate so that was one line i was thinking about in my head instead he goes knight e8 which is the main move and now i respond with f4 uh, and threatening f5 so 
This is the crazy move that happened in the game. Knight to d4, which is still a book move, even 16 moves in. And this move looks crazy. Like, your knight is just hanging. And it is hanging. But once I take back... Now, notice I'm threatening both knight to c6 and his bishop. So if he played bishop takes a2, for example... Now I will play knight to c6, threatening his queen and his bishop. Wherever his queen moves, I'm going to take his bishop with check. And after the king moves, yeah, I will now have a chance to take this pawn. And even though it looks like my king is not safe, I think my king is perfectly okay. Like here yeah, I can even play bishop to d3. And I don't think he has anything. Oh, yeah, he has knight e5, actually. So, yeah, a better move for me would be queen to c3. Hmm. I might add this one into my repertoire, because I can guarantee in bullets and blitz, everybody would play bishop d3, yeah, which is a blunder due to knight e5. <laughs> so, also, when I'm analyzing my games, I'm looking at, oh, what could have happened and I'm I remember this for the next time I play. So anyway in the game he played pawn to b3 this is a very sneaky move by the way because if I take his bishop now he plays pawn takes a2 and this is one of the funniest variations I can actually whatever I do I cannot stop him from playing pawn a2 to a1 and getting a queen next move which is quite funny. So yeah, that's why I played king to b1. And if he takes me, I'm just going to go king to a1. And now his bishop is out of squares. I'm still threatening knight c6. And I have a pretty okay position. So that's why he chose to take this way, which is still a book move. This must be one of the longest uh, lines I know. Because I know bishop b3 is still in the book as well. Move 20. Move 20 we still in theory. This is where my preparation ends. Move 21. That is crazy. No, actually, I still remember this move. Knight e5, bishop e2. I'm pretty sure this is the variation where my line ends. But here he instead plays rook to a4. And now notice that. A lot of people, especially in over-the-board tournaments, they get worried when, oh, my opponent knows all this theory. But yeah, after this I know my opponent's out of theory now, because rook a4, you can see, it's not a top move. And I could tell that because I have this move bishop c4, which I played. And I think it's crazy how that, that's giving me inaccurate when it's the top move on the computer. <laughs> so... I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me add it quickly for you. But there, you can see bishop c4 is a top computer move. So I wonder why it's saying it's inaccurate. But uh, never mind that. Let's keep going. So here he played knight e5. Good move. Always this knight in the center is going to be annoying for me. Because this knight is on an outpost, I can never attack it with the pawn. So I was already thinking about some ways to trade it off. Instead, I just played h4, which is not a bad move. But realistically, this move does not really achieve anything. Because my pawn was already defended. So oh, here the computer recommends pawn to f6, just breaking open our opponent's king. And this king, although we sacrificed the pawn, this king is very weak. So h4, that's just solidifying everything. King to h8, again, this is a bad move because it doesn't achieve anything. Although maybe it gets off the line of my bishop. So that is not a bad move. Bishop to c2, attacking his rook. And here he played rook to g4, and I'm not going to lie, in the game I thought I'm playing queen to e2, attacking his rook. But then I realized that his rook is actually just protected by the knight. So 
this move would not make too much sense for me. That's why I played bishop to f4. And here I thought that, okay, his knight is his best piece. Because you can see the knight has control over so many squares. It's crazy. So that's why I want to get rid of his knight. Also, this is a threat, by the way. If he does nothing, I'm just going to take his knight. And I'm lined up on his queen. So that's the reason he actually played pawn to f6. But I'm not a fan of this move for the reason that I played in the game. Bishop takes knight, forcing him to take with this pawn. And once he takes with this pawn, queen d3, a great move, lining up the battery. I thought rook d4 was a very good option from him. Yeah, apparently I can play queen to b3. I like queen f3 though, trying to infiltrate on the back line. So, okay, rook f4 is a blunder, and I get my second great move, queen h5. So, you can see, this is the difference between a 1446 and a 2600. If I go back here, yeah. oh, sorry, I went a bit far. But my guy studied the whole opening book. He studied the whole opening book till move 20, till here. Yeah. He studied the whole opening book. But after the opening, he had zero idea what he was actually doing. Whereas I'm still coming up with plans and I'm still attacking him every move. And that's the main difference between 2600 and 1400. Is that I'm still improving my position every single turn. While he is just defending against my threats and not really achieving anything. So after queen to d3, thought he's just going to attack me. I played queen h5. Now he played e4. He was very scared of this attack that I had on his king. And here I found this is actually a great find, by the way. Pawn to f6 followed by pawn to g6. And he just can't stop checkmate. I think that's a, a great, great find. This was one little tactic that I had at the end of the game. And it just ended it off. And I will end you guys with a quote from Bobby Fischer, I think. He said, tactics flow out of good positions. It's very difficult to find a tactic if you have limited space and your position is not good. But if your position is good, then you will automatically find tactics. And anyway, thanks for watching this episode of Expert vs. Beginner.